putting our floor down in our tiny home cargo trailer. This is the beginning of some relaxation. Hey everyone, welcome back to our cargo trailer conversion. In this episode... We're going to be taking a look at the flooring, the lighting, and the overall space. We're going to also be installing this floor. Oh yeah, lots of stuff. So I had no idea what color I was going with for the floor. I actually was worried that I was going to go into this crazy rabbit hole and take ages to decide. But when it came down to it and it was the day to buy the flooring, because I thought we were doing it mm -hmm. the next day, we actually weren't. We were. <laughs> Turned out to be a little bit of a delay. but um. And then the flooring was kind of in the back of my car for a really long time. But when it came down days. to it, yeah. a few days, I think it was more like a week, maybe a couple. When it came down to it and it was time to decide on the flooring, I walked in, I saw some stuff, it was on sale and it was perfect. Yeah, that was pretty much the deciding factor. <laughs> it was on sale and it was available. It was a yeah. color I didn't really expect. Like, I didn't know if I was going with dark or mm -hmm. what I was doing, but I think this light color that I chose is gonna really uh, keep this space kind of feeling as open as it can when it comes to this tiny little space. It's pretty tiny, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of had the easy part buying the flooring, but it did it work okay putting it together? Yeah, yeah, piece of cake. It went in really, really nice and it's a good color. You did a good job. So officially, what is this flooring called? This is just a tongue and groove click flooring is what I always call it, but it's it's just a fake flooring. It's not real wood or anything like that. It's just printed on. So it's not even veneer? It's not a real veneer, no, no. <laughs> Only the highest quality for us. <laughs> well, it's durable, right? It's just a yeah. laminate. So it's a durable laminate floor and it's it's just gonna be perfect for this little tiny home. The best way when you're installing laminate or any kind of flooring really is to make sure you find a nice straight line. I'll measure off the wall, maybe a couple boards, snap a line, and then you get your main straight line, especially if you're dealing with a hallway or something like that. You want to have a nice straight line. You, if your walls are crooked, you don't want to be following your walls necessarily. Every space is a little different and this isn't like the, the tutorial on how to install, but Essentially, your baseboard will cover any kind of discrepancies in your in your wall if it's not straight. Because a lot of homes are just not built straight anymore. And then you just stagger your joints. Like hardwood. You just run your joints in a stagger so that uh, it all fits together nicely and you don't just have rows of joints. Depending on the size of your laminate, you know, I think we did a 12 or 16 inch, looks like a 12 inch stagger. So. Yeah, I just 12 inch staggered every board and, and then you don't get any waste. And so your cutoffs you're using as your first piece in your next stagger. So it, you utilize all your material. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's the three R's. <laughs> so this laminate, I mean, it obviously depends on the quality of laminate that you're going to be using. If it can mm. handle moisture. Some can, some can't. This one I think is going to be okay. We'll find out once we spill some wine on it. But um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how the light flooring does with red wine. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I mean, I think it's fine. It was definitely worth the price. And, and uh, if we don't like it, we get to take it out and put a new one in. I mean, we did even have a moment where we had to correct something and you were able to lift up a whole bunch of pieces at oh, once. Yeah, that's that right. was crazy. Yeah. I screwed up on one of my measurements. I think it was a joint where I wanted my joints and I ended up having to pull up part of it and rejig it. But it's super easy to take apart and put back together. So that's definitely a positive. I mean, if we do want to replace this with something else, we can take it out. Not a big deal. I love the way he talks about it, like it's our dream home. <laughs> it's not our dream home. <laughs> you make it seem like you've done a lot of this. I have. <laughs> 20 years of carpentry. What other flooring options are out there besides laminate? 
for a trailer like this, I would definitely aim for something that's a little bit more tough, waterproof. So even like a linoleum would have been great. You know, glue it down. There's no joints. So it's just really easy to wipe out, sweep out. That's a huge benefit, I think, to just straight linoleum. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really want to do linoleum. I don't. I didn't want to, uh, you know, deal with all the glue. And it, I think we were doing this when it was kind of cold out too, if I remember correctly. It's just personal preference, really. Something that's durable and cleanable, because it's not like we have a mudroom. You're probably <laughs> going to be coming in here with snowy boots on once in a while, and it's just you want something that's durable. Uh, <laughs> sorry to laugh. What would have been easier, building our cool cabinet that we originally wanted <laughs> or flooring under the bed because now we're out of time. I mean, this looks ugly anyhow, so we'll, we'll box it in and make it look nice. So now we have a whitewashed wood floor look for our modern farmhouse, tiny home cargo trailer conversion. There we go. But we've been working on other things too. I had some obsessing to do about these two lights mm -hmm. that are kind of the only sconces that we're going to have in here. So where you want it? Um, Higher. No, I don't, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because my head is down here. My bulkhead. Yeah, really? It's pretty far away from your head. Placement is a big deal when you've only got two wall sconces in your entire home. For us, we we're putting them by the bed mm -hmm. and, it, you know, you don't want to hit your head on them. We are both very tall people, so it's tough because we don't have a lot of ceiling height in here. The bed is actually lifted up kind of high so we can have storage underneath. So we had a very small sort of area to put that light. Yeah, we wanted it to be high enough so we could sit up in bed and read, but not right up at the ceiling. Yeah, so. you don't want to be bumping your head against it. and Yeah. So. But it ends up being kind of cool, I think, because they, when they're finally in, they'll define the space. I mean, the bed space kind of becomes the bed zone. We'll see. If not we'll see if it does. <laughs> <laughs> the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll see if it works the way we we're, we're hoping. Why do we have to do all the placement of it now? Why is that so important? Just for the electrical so we can run the wire, get the proper boxes in, and, and get everything kind of situated where we want it so that when we're ready to hook them up, we're good to go. Because even though you have the tongue and groove on now, you can still deal with the wiring? Yeah, because they're high up, I've just kind of created a channel in behind so I can just sneak the wire up into the main channel that I have running on both sides. The wall sconces, you saw, we were just holding them up. We were using cups first. Those so, were great. It was a great yeah, idea. Yeah, everyone has their methods. And we found the location, and I drilled some holes and ran some wire. And, and it was tricky finding a sconce that was going to be small enough, but not too small. And meet my aesthetic requirements. For such a small area, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. Whoops. So now that's not as, as much of an issue. There's lots of taking time to kind of sit back and assess the space. Yeah. Just sort of feeling out what we want. I guess the, the couch will be going to about here, right? You know, is the couch too big? Is it too small? How yeah. big do we want our counter to be? I mean, we're not using this as like a mobile home. So it's, you know, we don't need all these amenities. It's just sort of a weekend thing. Who knows? Maybe we'll end up living in here. Maybe no, this will be... <laughs> no, no. You don't want to make it tiny home full time, babe? No. no. That's not my aspiration in life. To That's a lot of life goals for a lot of people. Oh, I'm not knocking it. But for me, I've lived in a house. I can't downgrade to a tiny home. Need more. I need my elbow space. Brad wanted lots of elbow room. And I well, think I'm not I... not small. Yeah, we had that discussion with the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. There's this fly up here. He's really trying to get out. I feel like when we're here, we're gonna have lots of interesting critters in here. Just no, no, no critters. critters. No critters. Well, you fly. You're building this place. Are there any places that flies can get in? Just the sunroof. Yeah, we have an issue with the sunroof. The moth 
capture. We <laughs> have a major issue right now. The magnet for moths of oh all of Alberta want to come here <laughs> and like get in this thing and they find the smallest crack. <laughs> so when are you going to fix that? I don't know. I'm going to have to get on the roof and see what's wrong with it. We've got to spend some time fixing that for sure because you open the door and there's like 30 dead moths on the ground. Yeah. It's gross. I think there's just a little gasket that right here, it's broken. I should have taken video of all those dead moths. No one wants to see that. I don't have anything more to say about that. I do all the cleaning. <laughs> oh, you get all the focus? No, it's the light um, thingy. Okay, we're rolling, okay. right? <clears throat> yes, 12 seconds in. Hey everyone, in this episode of our cargo trailer conversion, I know I mixed it up. Brad wasn't ready. He, <coughs> was, he couldn't joking. handle it. He couldn't handle it. All right, here we go. Hey, every, <laughs> look at the camera, honey. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to our cargo trailer conversion. In this episode. Oh, it's my cue. <laughs> That's all you're saying. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Here I go again. <laughs>